Here are 25 things I personally hope Overwatch 2 changes or updates in no particular order. Make sure to leave your feedback or suggestions in the comments and upvote the ones you like or the ones you agree with so that they get bumped to the top. And I promise you, Blizzard and the Overwatch devs will probably watch this video and read your comments. So lay it all out there, but be constructive and fair so that we can continue enjoying the game for years to come. But quickly, let me tell you about Alsa and Soren, who are the brand new heroes introduced in AFK Journey, who are the sponsors of today's video. This is a beautiful RPG on iOS, Android, and PC with a unique 3D canvas art world. AFK Journey is launching the debut chapter of the new season on May 10th called Song of Strife, where you can follow the captivating story of the War Song Festival. As I said before, this new chapter introduces two new characters, Ulsa, a Mauler epic hero, and Soren, a Mauler rare hero. So what do you do in this game? Well, besides exploring the Warsong camp and the Sunsea Arena, you can explore other areas and play the new heroes and try their abilities like Soren's Whirlwind Swing or Alsa's Rolling Boulder. You can battle enemies everywhere like in the Raging Duels, the Supreme Arena, and Dura's Trial, which is a brand new seasonal mode where you clear floors and collect rewards. I mean, the question should really be, what can't you do? Download the game for both PC and mobile via the link in the description and use code AFKJNEWSEASON to get 500 diamonds and 50,000 coins to help you on your journey. Add a visual indicator for the DPS passive, but for your supports, because in mid-season 9, that patch introduced a visual indicator beside your health bar to indicate your healing status effect. If you have a down arrow, you have reduced healing from the DPS passive. Up arrow, amplified healing via Anna's Bionade. A complete purple, anti-healing effect from Anna or Junker Queen. If you have both arrows, that means you're buffed by a friendly Anna nade while being hit by an enemy DPS. It's two effects. While this looks nice, the problem is it's in the first person perspective of the affected player. I'd like a change where I can see this effect on my teammate above their HP bar, like above their player model, so that I know as a support, if I'm pumping heals, it will be at a reduced rate. So I know I'll have to spend maybe an extra bit of ammo to top them off. Why haven't we added party frames to the bottom left of the UI in PvP? They already have it in the PvE mission, so that means it's programmed in the game somewhere. Just have to add it in, or make it a setting option that you can toggle on or off if you really do dislike that UI clutter. This would be a godsend as a support player to quickly glance at who's at low HP. And while we're at it, you can actually add or keep that visual indicator for the healing status icon down there as well for that DPS passive and whatnot. Especially if you didn't like the suggestion of adding the indicator on the player model HP. Visual effects in the game need a major overhaul. In particular, the burning effects, the nanos, and Mauga's cardiac overdrive because they're really hard to differentiate. This suggestion was inspired by Reddit user Mac9090 who posted this. Can you tell what effect this enemy Orisa has? This one, only burning. This one, only a nano boost. Only a cardiac overdrive. This one is two, burn and nano boost. Burn and cardiac overdrive. Nano and cardiac overdrive. And finally, the holy trifecta of burn, nano, and cardiac overdrive. For the replay viewer, why is it that all my replays or any code I import from someone else reverse my default color settings? So for example, it makes my teammates red and my enemies blue, but I play in reverse where all my teammates are blue and I associate my teammates with blue and all the enemies are red. They need to change this or at least make it match your colorblind settings for those who have different colors. And while we're at it, add a scoreboard in the replay viewer if that's possible, or at least some way to pull up the current stats wherever the match is paused. Please add a try it out or a try before you buy option for all skins and cosmetics. Overwatch only lets you preview the mythic skins and the new weapon skins only, but please just have it for everything else, because sometimes you'll buy a skin and realize you hate the way the scope looks, as Ash for example, because different weapons on different skins have different scopes. Or for me personally, I bought the Rubber Ducky Zen and I honestly hate it because it just keeps squeaking. I would have never bought this skin if I knew how annoying it would sound, I'm sorry. Add hero preferences when hovering over someone's profile. In the early days of Overwatch 1, one of the best quality of life changes back then was to see what heroes people played at a quick glance, but it did come with some downsides such as people seeing you have the most hours on Sombra for example and assume you only play Sombra and can't play anything else, but in reality you only played and flexed to Sombra at the time because it was meta and now you hate how everyone labels you as that dirty unethical Sombra player. So my middle ground proposal 
for this hero preferences is an option to pin up to three heroes you prefer to play so that if I queue in with the tank that has a private profile, I can at least hover and glance over it and be like, okay, they pinned and show that they prefer playing Zarya, Sigma, and Junker Queen. I can work with that and then choose my hero and play around that. Add damage numbers. I love, love, love the feedback you get in Apex and see exactly how much damage each bullet does with the R301, for example. And Overwatch does need the same thing, in my opinion, or at least make it a toggleable option if you don't like that clutter. This is already doable in the Overwatch workshop. It's what I use all the time when I film videos. People always ask, how did you do that in the workshop? But it's a number that follows an enemy's player model and it's really big. So an official Blizzard dev uh, damage number with much smaller numbers on your first person perspective would be such a good change in my opinion. And it would be really nice for people who come back to the game after a while and be like, oh wow, soldiers damage per bullet does 19. Even though you know they remembered it as 20 or 18 at different times, you can at least see it. Add an advanced hero summary section on your hero info page. On PC, you can press F1 or on console, you press your ultimate button. And then this basic simple hero summary page comes out to explain what everything does, which is great for new players, not too overwhelming and good for learning. But adding an advanced page, which gives you precise numbers like fall off range, AOE radius of abilities, bullet projectile size. This is all information that the community has put together by doing their own testing and reverse engineering. But if you baked it into the game itself, it would allow it to dynamically change from patch to patch. The new patch hits, I can literally see the new bullet size or the new fall off range right there. Allow us to change the main menu background to anything else, especially ones from the past, because right now I understand you have to do some sort of promotion. So I know there's a mirror watch background and in the previous seasons you had the cowboy bebop background to promote that or the La Seraphim skins. I get that. So every time you relaunch, have your promotional one be the default one, but allow us to choose a secondary one afterwards. Because some people like to listen to the Kiriko Bao song like it's 2022 again or avoid certain ones. For example, I would have loved to get rid of that random screaming Reinhardt during the Halloween event. While we're at it, add a dark mode for the menus or while you queue. And then as you're queuing, add hero mastery to the while you wait game modes. It'll be great to help improve the popularity of the mode too. When you load into the match, let us see who's grouped up again. It used to be indicated by a line in Overwatch 1 in both the matchup screen and when you press the scoreboard. And I know we can't go back to that because there's roll lock now, but something to indicate that this player is grouped with another player would be nice. Add a map veto. It was actually one of my favorite things in Halo 3 as a kid, just loading up Snowbound, but then vetoing and getting the pit. For those unfamiliar, it's just a map voting system where if the majority of the players in a lobby, so it would have to be six out of 10 players, if they veto the map, a new random one gets chosen. Allow players to customize their UI screen alignment. A lot of games have this onboarding setting to align the game with their screen, and Overwatch should offer this in the game. So for those who want the HP abilities or kill feeds to be tighter in the center, they can do so. I'd also love it as a creator because when I do these top overlays, game elements always get cut off like the kill feed. And believe it or not, the console by default actually has it pushed lower. And on PC, you can do this by editing the config files, but that requires you to like look up a YouTube tutorial and like jump through all these extra steps. Just add it as a setting baked into the game. Ever have teammates who just have the loudest mics of all time with piercing screams? Oh my God, is that car cue? <sighs> You taught me how to get to GM, I love you. If they haven't calibrated their mic volume, can we please just have individual volume sliders for each player? Feels like many other games have it, and we need it for Overwatch. Thanks. I think souvenirs need a little bit of a rework. They're just a bizarre and mostly unused cosmetic filler for battle passes and shop bundles, except for maybe Winton. My suggestions are A, don't make it take up one of the only four emote slots, and B, cut the wind up animation, and then C, make it so it just pops up over your hero model and kind of follows you around. That's how I've always envisioned souvenirs to work, like it does in League of Legends, where you just use like a sticker or hero mastery that hovers over your head and it's pinned to your character as you move. But in the case of Overwatch, make it so you're only allowed to use it in between rounds and disable it when a match begins so you don't just see a giant Winton above that Widow across the map, though it would be hilarious. Emotes are actually pretty decent, but they could be better. Allow players to quickly cancel emotes so that they aren't locked in the entire animation, especially if they press the button by accident mid-match. This change alone can also add so much to the meme and viral clip potential. Just think of all the people in League who spam sit-ups on set when they kill an enemy. So think of like all the Soldier 76 push-ups on that dead enemy body. 
absolutely hilarious for the player. Plus, it can create a viral moment, incentivizes people to buy more emotes, which then equals more money for you, Blizzard. Look at that, I'm working for you. I'd love to have icons back on the bottom left of the hero portrait, so in competitive play, it should display your rank icon like it used to in Overwatch 1. If you're playing any non-competitive mode, it should show your hero progression badge relative to the hero you're playing. That way, players can actually learn and associate what the icons mean over time, because I guarantee if you ask most people which badge is the higher progression in this picture, they'd all give a different answer, especially if they play different games. Like, if they'll look at this and be like, that's Emerald or Ascendant, and that's Diamond, and that's Gold. It's a different order, because obviously in Overwatch here, you can see it goes from green, blue, to purple, to gold. All railings, glass, and any destroyed Enjoyable environmental objects needs to be removed when the round starts. I understand map aesthetics and I think it's fine to keep it before a round begins, but as soon as the doors open for attackers, they need to all just instantly despawn. It's incredibly frustrating to miss an ability if it accidentally collides with one, and the worst part is, initial defenders can sort of have that to their advantage, and then when they switch sides, the objects are no longer there for the next team, so it's kind of just uneven, unfair, and unfun. The stats on the profile page is a mess, and I'ma be honest, I just don't like how it's just a list, and the list isn't even filterable by role. I'd love a better at a glance stats page where you can quickly see your most important stats and maybe like an associated icon like your average elims, average deaths, average damage, and average healing done per 10 minutes. Then I'd love for that to be filtered by roll as well because obviously your damage or healing per 10 minutes will change whether you're playing a damage hero or a support hero. On the topic of stats, I'd also love an official map win rate stat. I've had my Season 9 stats manually tracked, and I found it incredibly fascinating to see how well I was playing on Blizzard World, but I would absolutely shit the bet if I ever queued Havana or Pariso. For the in-game scoreboard, I really wish I was able to customize that final displayed stat. Like, I don't actually need to know the damage mitigated. Let me either turn it off completely, or change it to something relevant to my role, like healing received, so I can see that my main tank uh, is eating all my heals and they have no right to complain about heals, because I can prove to them how much I've been pumping them. Fix the non roll queue tank HP. If you're playing open queue, mystery heroes, or any arcade modes, all the tanks have this global umbrella setting of minus 150 HP flat, which is just so infuriating because it's not proportionate to their total HP pool. Roadhog goes from like 800 to 650 HP, which is an 18.75% decrease, but a hero like Drunker Queen goes from 525 to 375, which is a 28.57% decrease. That's not even close. She's like the same HP as Bastion. Make it a decrease of a percentage, not a flat amount. Thank you. And finally, the last thing I wish for Overwatch 2 to change is their text filters. How on earth are fun things like GG Easy getting converted to fun little lines, but people who are legitimately typing slurs and awful things are not getting it auto flagged or detected? Come on. All right, on that note, that's my short list of suggestions for Overwatch 2 to change. Now it's your turn in the comments. Play nice. See you later.